tonight's top ten. Number ten. Squidward, we don't need television. Not as long as we have our imagination. With imagination, I can be anything I want. A pirate. Arr. A football player. Ha a starfish. Number nine. Yeah, but I... Right. Wax on, right hand. Wax off, left hand. Wax on, wax off. Breathe in through nose, out the mouth. Wax on, wax off. Don't forget to breathe. Very important. Wax on, wax off. Number eight. To uh, all the people whose feelings that got hurt by the burn book. I'm really sorry. You know, I've never been to one of these things before. And when I think about how many people wanted this and how many people cried over it and stuff, I mean, I think everybody looks like royalty tonight. Look at Jessica Lopez. That dress is amazing. And Emma Gerber, I mean, that hairdo must have taken hours really pretty <laughs> so why is everybody stressing over this thing I mean it's just plastic it's really just <laughs> share it number seven So it's really three things. The first thing is about opportunity. The second thing is about being sexy. Yeah! And the third thing is about living life. So first, opportunity. I believe that opportunity looks a lot like hard work. When I was 13, I had my first job with my dad carrying shingles up to the roof. And then I got a job washing dishes at a restaurant. And then I got a job in a grocery store deli. And then I got a job in a factory sweeping Cheerio dust off the ground. And I've never had a job in my life that I was better than. I was always just lucky to have a job. And every job I had was a stepping stone to my next job. And I never quit my job until I had my next job. And so opportunities look a lot like work. Number six. The world needs you to stop being boring. Yeah, you. Boring is easy. Everybody can be boring, but you're gooder than that. Life is not a game, people. Life isn't a cereal either. Well, it is a cereal. And if life is a game, aren't we all on the same team? We can make every day better for each other. If we're all on the same team, let's start acting like it. We got work to do. We can cry about it, or we can dance about it. We were made to be awesome. Mambo number five. You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers? I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! Son, we live in a world that has walls, and those walls have to be guarded by men with guns. Who's gonna do it? You? You, Lieutenant Weinberg? I have a greater responsibility than you can possibly fathom. You weep for Santiago and you curse the Marines. You have that luxury. You have the luxury of not knowing what I know, that Santiago's death, while tragic, probably saved lives. And my existence, while grotesque and incomprehensible to you, saves lives. You don't want the truth because deep down in places you don't talk about at parties. You want me on that wall. You need me on that wall. We use words like honor, code, Loyalty. We use these words as the backbone of a life spent defending something. 
Number four, yeah! I got a bust in the jaw in answer to a prayer a little bit ago. Oh, no, 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 Georgia. I'm the answer to your prayer. That's why I was sent down here. How'd you know my name? Oh, I know all about you. I've watched you grow up from a little boy. What are you, a mind reader or something? <laughs> well, who are you then? Clarence Oddbody, AS2. Oddbody? AS2, what, what, what's that, AS2? Angel, second class. <laughs> Three! And there must be a purpose, and wouldn't it be so convenient if we could just pick up the phone and call God and ask these questions? And I started writing, and what poured out of me was an imaginary conversation with God, which was one-sided. And I finished writing it, and I looked at it, and I said to myself, and I hadn't even been doing stand-up ever. There was no club in town. I said, I'm going to do this on The Tonight Show with Johnny Carson. At the time, he was the king. And I'm going to be the first woman in the history of the show to be called over to sit down. And several years later, I was the first woman in the history of the show, and only woman in the history of the show, to sit down because of that phone conversation with God that I wrote. And I started this path of, of stand-up, and it was successful and it was great but it was hard because I was trying to please everybody and I had the secret that I was keeping that I was gay and I thought if people found out they wouldn't like me they wouldn't laugh at me then my career turned into I got my own sitcom and uh, that was very successful another level of success and I thought what if they find out I'm gay then they'll never watch and um, this was a long time ago you probably this was when we just had white presidents but anyway this was back <laughs> many years ago and I finally decided that I was living with so much shame and so much fear that I just couldn't live that way anymore. And I decided to come out and make it creative and my character would come out at the same time. And it wasn't to make a political statement. It wasn't to do anything other than to free myself up from this heaviness that I was carrying around. And I just wanted to be honest. And I thought, what's the worst that can happen? I can lose my career. I did. I lost my career. I got the. The show was canceled after six years without even telling me. I read it in the paper. Um, the phone didn't ring for three years. I had no offers. Nobody wanted to touch me at all. Um, and yet I was getting letters from kids that almost committed suicide but didn't because of what I did. And I realized that I had a purpose. Number two. Morning. In less than an hour, aircraft from here will join others from around the world. And you will be launching the largest aerial battle in the history of mankind. Mankind, that word should have new meaning for all of us today. We can't be consumed by our petty differences anymore. We will be united in our common interest. Perhaps it's fate that today is the 4th of July, and you will once again be fighting for our freedom. Not from tyranny, oppression, or persecution, but from annihilation. We're fighting for our right to live, to exist. And should we win the day, the 4th of July will no longer be known as an American holiday, but as the day when the world declared in one voice, we will not go quietly into the night. We will not vanish without a fight. We're going to live on. We're going to survive. Today, we celebrate our Independence Day. Numero uno. And the truth shall set you free. If I will always want you.